My name is Jessica Gonzalez, and this is my husband, Juan Gonzalez Lopez. We represent the Blazers organization, as well as many others, and you could even argue the state of Wisconsin. Last night, as I thought about my statement, my son scooched over on the, cou over on the couch and snuggled into me. He laid with his head on my lap and I stroked his hair. We stayed like that until it was time for bed. He knows we're here today, and it was as if he knew we needed a little extra love last night. Moments like these should be pure with love and affection, but since November 21st, they are mixed with flashes and images of what could have been. Mama, I'm here. I was on the other side. This is one of the memories and words that I'll never forget and hear dozens of times a day without warning. The relief I felt hearing those words on November 21st was devastating, but I found my son unharmed. That should be the end of the story, right? We're fine, right? Physically, yes, but fine is a word we use when people ask us if we're okay, but we're not. It was only a short time before we had readied for the parade, got our hot cocoa, and took pictures to snap a shot of the fun about to be had. Before the parade, I left him with his teammate and new friend Jackson at the Blazers drop-off spot and walked my daughter to her dance team location. With my mother-in-law visiting from Mexico, she was excited for her first Christmas parade. Stationed at the corner of the Clark Hotel with friends, my daughter's dance group waved with smiles as they passed us. She was headed to the library where I would pick her up. The Dancing Grannies, one of our favorite groups, performed flawlessly as they passed us. My son's baseball group was after the extreme dancers who were within with sight. Then the gasps and screams came from everywhere and the red SUV sped past us. I yelled stop and put my hands out like I had the power to make it happen. I felt like I was punched in the stomach when I realized the SUV came from the direction of my son's group. Panicked and lightheaded and knowing my daughter was safe, I ran to find my son. Running through the streets, my legs felt like they had a life of their own. I found Jackson first. I saw his little body in his blazer's jersey, his eyes looking up, looking nowhere. I knew he was hurt badly. Seeing Jackson on the ground, I began looking for my son amongst, amongst the rest of the bodies. I screamed hysterically, searching frantically. What ifs filled my head. I heard mom from so many directions, but it wasn't him. Finally, it was. I turned to see him with other blazers who were in the team truck. He called out to me, Mama, I'm here. I was on the other side. <laughs> yes, I found my son unharmed, but after the chaos continued, we ran. I covered his eyes as we rushed back to our group. I called my husband to tell him something terrible had happened, but had no words to explain. Headed for the library, we were told there was an active shooter. We ran again. I covered my son's head with my arms so bullets would hit me first. He cried. I tried to assure him and myself that things like this don't happen. At the library, I ran up the stairs and shouted for my daughter, who was huddled with a friend and her daughter. Yes, I found my children unharmed. But after, the pain and terror continued. After the parade, we discovered people had died and that several people in my son's group were hit, including his coach and teammate. We learned that my son's teammate was in critical condition, but I already knew this. I still see his eyes 
without closing mine. What does it feel like to attend a funeral of a child your age? I hate that my kids know. I hate that I didn't get a chance to cheer on my son and Jackson during the baseball season last year. I hate that my son said it was weird having one less teammate. For more than a week, it was late nights to avoid sleep and our family of four piled into one bed. There was no question this was a traumatic experience. Counselors were available. My son didn't want to talk about it. And today still doesn't. I tried to return to work. I tried to return to teaching. I couldn't make it through a day without feeling hypervigilant, startling at every noise, having a panic attack from the sound of a door, shout, thud, gasp, anything and everything. After the parade, I couldn't make it through a day. My joy disappeared. I felt guilty. I had no right to feel joy since my son and daughter were alive and others were not. I was open about questions my kids had, but I cried and screamed in agony when they weren't around. I overreacted, shouting and pulling my kids near in the parking lots and streets or any time I saw a car come within a quarter mile away, convinced they all had ill intentions. PTSD throws all the punches. I left my career to work intensively on healing in a program for PTSD. I have only just returned to the workplace, only just a month ago. Something quieter, something with less action. Because after almost one year, some days still feel like November 21st was yesterday. Intrusive memories, hypervigilance, nightmares, anxiety, panic attacks, depression, anger, guilt, shame. These are all things I and others live with daily because Daryl Brooks drove through our joy and turned it to terror. When he suggested he could have hit more, he was wrong. He hit everyone. The toll this event has taken on everyone, physically hurt or not, is tremendous. And it sickens me to know that there are so many others with a similar story as ours. I know some today may offer forgiveness, but for me, forgiveness is for accidents for mistakes or poor choices that the offender expresses remorse for their actions. Daryl Brooks offers no remorse, but he did search for sympathy for himself. I cannot offer forgiveness. I will not. Daryl Brooks should be held accountable for every second of pain and trauma he inflicted on all of us that day including the many years inflicted already on Ms. Patterson. Free, he is and always will be a danger to society. With that, Your Honor, I ask that the full sentence is issued and he spends the rest of his days in prison without the chance of parole. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am.